Morning, guys. Oh, just, uh, but I've been asked why I don't talk about them. Uh, well, probably as much because I used to. Well, still I'm very political, but I just don't share my views that much anymore. Um, I've got to be honest with you. For YouTube, it's not worth it. Um, there's two reasons. Financially, you, you'll see that people um, that are politically active don't get much support financially. Uh, second one is that, quite simply, you'll never find a middle ground. There, there's this whole utopian society based on that. Um, there is a middle ground. There isn't. There will always be somebody at this extreme and this, somebody at this side. Um, they will never meet. <laughs> they, it's impossible. The views are so so far off the the path that it's impossible for them to come to an agreement and, on their own views. That's the point. Is that it's views. Um, but also, I'm sick and tired of the crap that gets spun around. I mean, the stuff relating to the gun stuff in America. I don't want to know. I'll be honest with you. I, I don't go to America. It's got nothing to do with me. And I have no interest in it. Um, it's. I know it sounds quite... Uh, well, it's not blasé, but it's more a case of... I just find it pointless. Um, because... My opinions and stuff doesn't matter in that arena. It has nothing to do with me. In the same way, I don't want people coming to me whining about it because it's nothing to do with me. It's the same thing. I'm not going to change American gun law, and it's not for me to decide if it should change. Um, but what I do get frustrated about is that things get so focused on that, yet many other more important things, and I say more important because there are actually things that could be fixed today, get ignored. Um, I'll give you some of the stuff that I've dealt with over the years. And first thing is the NHS and its house housing sell-offs. What happens? It sells it sells land off, and you end up with these half. I mean, for example, in um, Bristol, I was working on Southmead Hospital, which is a new hospital, but they'd sold the land at the old hospital, where they were sticking houses on there at over half a million pounds each. Now I'm not being funny. That does not fix any problems. One of the problems you've got is overpopulation. So building more houses because you've had to build a new hospital does not reduce the problem. It increases it. Second thing is there's a lack of realistic housing in the UK. The average person cannot afford a house these days um, unless they've already got themselves on the ladder. Getting on the ladder is very, very difficult. And you'll see a lot of lies come out of the media. They'll spin it in a way like, more people bought houses this year than last year, but won't mention that percentage-wise, the number, you know, volume, number of people has actually increased. But they may actually say, well, 10 more people bought, rather than saying the, the actual volume, the, the quantity of people that can't buy is still greater. So the percentages are wrong. They haven't done it on percentages. They've done it on the number of people that actually purchased, which is miles off. Um, <coughs> But even back when old Gordon Brown and the collapse of the Labour government, um, I was involved with a housing organisation that was involved with the buyback schemes. Now, the buybacks were to buy back properties from people that were, a lot of the time, unfit to have been given the house in the first place, been able to purchase it, because they'd lived in the council house all their life, bought a 70000 pounds £80,000 house, for £16,000, and then they've remortgaged it anyway because they've now got an asset that's worth more, and then they spent it all. And then this is the sort of thing that creates this big housing bubble that ends up in a collapse. Now, <clears throat> thing with a buyback, because these people don't look after anything, the houses we were getting back, we had to assess the amount of damage that was done to them. The answer to that was the houses on average, were costing between 19 and £21,000 <coughs> to fix what was in disrepair, to bring it up to a housing standard that was acceptable and rentable back to these people. Um, because we have a fairly strict guidelines, but the whole point is these guys had got mortgages and stuff against the properties they were living in, which were very cheap, and then remortgaged at a higher level yeah, hadn't spent any money on the house. 
No, bo- no new boilers or anything. Nothing that was needed. They just spent the money. And then the taxpayer then was given the burden of taking the property debt. Um, stuff that a lot of people are not aware of. <coughs> there was also <coughs> new builds. The houses that were being built at the time that the big developers that make normally make a small fortune in the boom um, sold them all to the government with zero defects. Zero defects means that the repairs are not the responsibility of the builder. So I was going to have a look at properties and I'm finding windows aren't sealed. So it's like sitting outside if you've got a strong wind coming through uh, because there, there's air blowing straight through the sides of the ha- the windows and it's all through the house because you normally fill them with um, fire, fire foam and insulation. Showers where they'd put the, the water in, there's no drainage, they don't bother connecting it. And all the liabilities on the taxpayer. So not only did they get market value, the builders, they didn't even finish them. They didn't even build them properly. There was a massive problem around that because they were getting forced to be taken by housing associations. Now, housing associations take them on, but it doesn't cost them anything either. It's a burden of the taxpayer. Uh, so those sort of things bugged me. Now, getting back to the NHS and building these half million pound houses, why don't they build what are called tiny houses? They're, they're suitable for like one, two bedroom, you know, good for a couple, good for a single person. And the most important bit, they don't take up a lot of space. And the advantage with that is somebody can get a mortgage for, say, £15,000 and they can pay it off quite quickly. Why, why do that? There's a huge demand of that side of the market. It gives them the, the first rung into the housing market. Why do you want to sell them a house that's 80000 Because you can't buy one of these ones at sixteen from the government. You have to be renting one of these ex-council houses that are now been taken back and now housing association. Um, but the point being is these tiny homes, you would have to get a mortgage and stuff, with a small mortgage because obviously it's a tiny house, but it would be in line with a lot of people's pay and it would actually stimulate the market because as people pay those off, they can move up the ladder, the next people move on and move up the ladder, move in, move up. And, you know, you're generating the ability for people to have their first homes. Um, this is why I don't get involved in politics, because a lot of time, the stuff I think about is too logical, which is why I'll never catch on. Also, I work with a lot of the government bodies that come up with these stupid ideas that involve building half-million-pound houses rather than building houses that are sustainable and needed and heavily viable because they could be debt-free in a very short period of time. Who wants to be debt-free? What a horrible thing. Um, yeah, so that's why I don't get involved in politics too much. Then you've got the other side that I see too much from what the corporations do to people. When I say corporations, you can call that the NHS, Ministry of Justice, um, most government bodies as well as blue chip companies because they're all the same. It's the same people that run them, same idiocy, <coughs> idiocy that goes on, same stupidity run by these morons. Um, and I do say it in quite strong terms because they love to praise themselves and ignore all the failures. Um, that's partly why I don't bother these days doing it. As I mean, I do get a job offers. Got three, three last week. I think I had one on Monday this week. But I'm just not interested. I've lost. And I was talking to a neighbor in the UK about this. He's an architect and he predominantly works in timber, uh, timber frame construction. And he just potters around and does gardening and stuff now. And he's got this old transit van. Um, I've known him for years because we, we first met. This was the funny thing. I was working at a um, timber frame housing construction company. And I used to be one of the carpenters. We used to build all the, the stud partition walls, put the windows in, all that flat pack. So when it gets to site, they basically just build the building. Um, and I think it was about six months before we realized we're both at the same place because obviously he's an architect, so he's working in the office where I'm actually on the tools. Um, but that's how we become friends. Yet we've been neighbors for years. But that's, that's the difference between 
the UK, a lot of people just don't talk to each other, or don't see each other because you're at work most of the time. When you're home, you're sat in the garden. Um, it's yeah, that's why I like Spain a bit more. You probably know it's with the house I'm in now. It's got a little courtyard, so it's often kids play down there and that sort of stuff. Got a swimming pool, got a tennis. You've got a lot of social stuff where people can actually meet. A UK, a lot of that was dismantled when they started getting rid of the pubs. So the you know, there's a lot of the social stuff just been evaporated. Um, because a lot of pubs become restaurants and restaurants ain't pubs you may still have your quiz night and whatever but it's not the same sort of social level that the old pubs used to have where everybody knew everybody and half the people were related and all that sort of stuff but that sort of stuff's dying out it's, it's sad a lot of that social aspect's going and that's that's my reality I, I, I remember my upbringing um, I was predominantly military based, um, so everybody I knew was in the military. And the thing with that is, we went fishing together, did sports together, uh, rugby, because my, my father used to play in the rugby team, so we'd go at the rugby on the weekends. Um, when the schools were out in the summer, the military put on a lot of things like uh, yachting and things, so to keep us teens out of trouble. Um, but the whole point is, it was a very strong community. And when the fathers go away <coughs> um, to whatever, there is a collective of mothers that all get together, or well, wives, um, to keep together as a team. And I will say the kids are similar. You're all net together. It's uh, got to be, I do miss that sort of stuff in the UK. I do find in the Philippines that it does work very similar. <coughs> got to apologize. I still got this blocked nose for some reason. Um, in the Philippines, you do still get a social aspect, but it's a bit distorted now. Um, but I don't even know how long it has been distorted. Um, there's many problems in it, let's put it that way. But at the same time, people still network together. You know, if, there was a meeting with April's cousin. Uh, her cousin met her, her, my wife's brother in Macau. They didn't even know they were related. But now, <laughs> interwoven, because we suddenly got this connection with somebody we, that they may have met in childhood or something somewhere. But the point is, as soon as you're connected that way, it's a stronger connection. I've got a relative of mine that's struggling to speak to his own kids, not because he's done anything bad, but simply he got divorced years ago and um, they sort of drifted apart with the usual happy divorce scenario. Um, and his kids won't even answer emails and stuff. For me, that's sad. You know, at the end of the day, I mean, I, I separated from my ex-girlfriend years ago, but I still talk to my daughter. I still, I mean, like now, I just told her, you know, if you want to come over on holiday, just let me know when you come in. I'll pay for your ticket and just come over, you know. We're we're not as close. I mean, I think it's very difficult to stay close um, over the, the distance. <clears throat> but uh, even though, was, I mean, one of the things I did explain is if I was closer, due to the issues relating to the ex-partner at the time, she would make things awkward anyway. So it didn't matter if I was halfway around the world or in the next street. It was just one of those things that sometimes occur in breakups. Um, it's sad, and it's sad that it works that way in the whole legal system in the UK. is not about the benefit of the child or anything else. It's about getting the cash out of whoever's got the most money, which is normally the guy. Um, even the mediation, which isn't even a, um, a proper court, um, you're not allowed to discuss what goes on in there and the first things they ask for is your bank details where you work and all that stuff which is why I just whipped up and threw it in the bin but it was the right thing to do because when I looked at what other people have had with these things especially when they went public it involved jail time um, yeah this is why I don't get involved in politics, because, to be honest, I would just say the reality, and a lot of people don't like reality. Um, and it's, for YouTube, nobody really cares. You know, at the end of the day, I think a lot of us go onto YouTube to get away from all that crap. I mean, Facebook, I've got to admit, I, 
I screen out a lot of this stuff these days, not because I have any less feeling towards it. It's just that unless you can change it, why get involved in it? You can be doing something more productive, um, which may actually give you the opportunity somewhere to do something more productive. I mean, I've done a few things this month um, for a few people, which added value. Well, I get <coughs> for example, uh, somebody's child was sick. I've footed that medical bill. Um, what else have I done this month? It's been a few things. Sorted a few things out for people. But they ultimately, you've got to decide what makes you happy. And this is why you'll see a lot of these mentoring things. Talk about surrounding yourself with positive people and all this other stuff. Because you get congested and swamped with negative stuff. Because the world which survives on it. It loves it. It's easy media. Easy media. Um, this is why when you look for words in news articles, you will see could, maybe, possibly, our sources, which isn't actually any source whatsoever, um, and many other of these things are just rumors, or they've been started by the person who wrote the thing in the first place. This is why I don't read newspapers, don't bother with the news. Um, I know, you know, some people think, well, you should, you should. And it's like, I can't be bothered with it. <coughs> and it's not, um, it's not that I've lost interest in it. It's quite the opposite. I have too much interest in it. Um, Venezuela, for example, look how much media coverage that's getting. Basically nothing. But it's a very important one because people are actually starving there. And the Civil War is close to breaking out, but hardly any news coverage. Yet, talk about gun control. It's everywhere. It's like a rash. Um, but anyway, that's why I don't talk about too much on politics. And updates for this week. I'll do a video 